We wanted to challenge them on the track, and of course, we're always up for a challenge. Tonic Seg CEO just made a move that could change the future of high performance cars forever. It was enough to break some records for most powerful homologated production engine in the world and the fastest, a uh, production car in the world. While the EV industry races to dominate headlines, Christian von Koenigsegg quietly made a bold decision, one that's about to send shockwaves through the entire automotive world. This isn't just another upgrade. It's a new engine, a new philosophy, and according to Koenigsegg himself, it's powerful enough to shake the entire EV industry. Yes, so, ah, uh, it's a technology we've been working on in a sister company, which is actually behind us here, failed in this room. We've been working on it for 20 years. It has been a big challenge. What exactly did he build? Why did he abandon his original plan? And how does this new creation threaten everything electric automakers have been working toward? The answer might just leave you speechless. When speed met luxury, the reg era broke the rules. There was a time when hybrid cars were mocked, slow, quiet, overly practical. The kind of car you drove if you cared about gas prices or felt guilty about your carbon footprint. Then came the Koenigsegg reg era, and it didn't just change the game, it blew it to pieces. In 2015, when it was first revealed, the reg era didn't look like a revolution. It looked like a supercar, low, wide, impossibly sleek. But underneath that sculpted carbon fiber shell was something no one expected, a plug-in hybrid with no traditional transmission, no gear shifts, and no nonsense. It had a 5.0L twin-turbo V8, yes, but also three electric motors. Together, they produced 1,500 horsepower. That's not just fast, that's world-bending. The numbers were outrageous. It could accelerate from 0 to 249 miles per hour and then come to a full stop, all in just 31 seconds. That's not science fiction, that's faster than a Bugatti Chiron. It made the McLaren F1 look like it was stuck in traffic. But the reg era wasn't just about violent speed, it was about proving something deeper, that raw power and refinement could coexist in the same machine. See, most hypercars make sacrifices, they are loud, bumpy, claustrophobic. They're meant to be thrilling, not comfortable. But the reg era quietly ignored all that. It had soft suspension for daily driving, a quiet cabin, quilted leather seats, touchscreen infotainment, heated seats, even cup holders. It didn't feel like a race car trapped in a tuxedo, it felt like a luxury lounge capable of blowing the doors off anything that dared pull up next to it. And then there was the Koenigsegg Direct Drive. No gears, no shifting, just a hydraulic coupling that connected the massive V8 directly to the rear axle. Under 30 miles per hour, it would slip, allowing the engine to build revs. Above that, it locked in, unleashing power with terrifying immediacy. This wasn't just engineering wizardry, it was a rejection of the status quo, a refusal to play by anyone else's rules. What's even crazier is how easy the reg era was to live with. Power-adjustable seats, rain-sensing wipers, wireless charging, active damping. Everything about the car whispered daily driver, even as its exhaust screamed like a banshee. It was civil when you wanted it to be, savage when you needed it to be. Only 80 of them were built between 2016 and 2022, each handcrafted and sold for around $2 million. Today, you'd be lucky to find one for sale under $4.5 million, and even if you could afford it, good luck catching it. The reg era was never meant to be just a fast car. It was a message, a warning shot, a declaration that hybrid didn't have to mean compromise. But that was just the beginning, because while the world was still trying to make sense of what the reg era had done, Koenigsegg was already looking further ahead, testing, tweaking, pushing the limits of what a hybrid powertrain could really do. The reg era had shown what was possible when you ignored convention. What came next would make even this monster look tame. Anatomy of a revolution, what made the reg era so different? To understand just how far ahead the reg era was, you have to pop the hood, 
metaphorically, anyway, because what Koenigsegg built under that carbon fiber skin wasn't just fast, it was fundamentally different from anything that had come before. The Regira wasn't born out of tradition, it was a product of rebellion. Most performance cars start with a layout, engine, transmission, drivetrain, then they chase power. Koenigsegg flipped the formula. They started with the question, how do we make something brutally powerful, beautifully smooth, and completely unlike anything else on the road? The answer? Eliminate the gearbox. Remove the complexity. Replace it with a hydraulic coupling that connects the internal combustion engine straight to the rear wheels. No shifting, no lag, just instant force. That system, called Koenigsegg Direct Drive, KDD, changed everything. Below 30 miles per hour, the coupling slipped, letting the engine rev freely. But once the car picked up speed, the system locked in, and the result was raw, uninterrupted acceleration. No pauses, no clunks, just a smooth surge of power that felt less like driving and more like being launched. Then came the hybrid system. Three electric motors, one at the crankshaft smoothing torque and acting as a starter, two more on the rear axle, each producing 241 horsepower. They weren't there to save gas, they were there to punch the laws of physics in the throat. Together with the V8, the electric motors allowed the Regera to hit absurd performance figures but also gave it 22 miles of pure electric range. Not because it needed to be clean, but because it could. The battery that powered those motors was a marvel of its own, 800 volts, capable of discharging 670 horsepower, and it weighed only 141 pounds. That's less than most suitcases, and yet this featherweight powerhouse could regenerate energy faster than most EVs could spend it. It was efficient, but in the way a loaded rifle is efficient. Aerodynamics, active ride height, adjustable suspension, intelligent. The reg era didn't react to the road, it anticipated it. The car crouched at high speeds, wings and flaps adjusting to create nearly 1,000 pounds of downforce at 155 miles per hour. The suspension and engine mounts even changed their stiffness depending on how aggressive you were driving. At low speeds, the car stayed quiet and composed. But open it up, and the entire chassis transformed into a low-flying weapon. And still, Koenigsegg didn't cut corners on comfort. Inside the cabin, quilted leather, carbon fiber trim, and a center-mounted touchscreen. Heated seats. Soft close doors. Cup holders. You could adjust the pedals and steering wheel to fit your body like a glove. There were even parking sensors, rain-sensing wipers, and a rear-view camera. Most supercars give you a helmet and a prayer. The reg era gave you refinement. This was a car that blurred every line. It didn't behave like a hybrid, or a Grand Tourer, or a hypercar. It just redefined all of them. And while other automakers were obsessed with shaving weight or chasing lap times, Koenigsegg quietly built something smarter, stronger, more elegant. But that elegance wasn't weakness, it was the quiet before the storm. Because while the reg era was thrilling the few who were lucky enough to own one, something else was quietly in development. Something Koenigsegg wasn't ready to talk about, not yet. But whispers were beginning to circulate. The reg era had changed how we look at hybrids. What came next would change how we look at everything else.